Cognition after encephalitis. Module Introduction. Damage to the brain after encephalitis can result in changes in cognition. Cognitive skills or functions are another term to describe thinking skills. Learning to manage changes in cognition after encephalitis means becoming more aware of how you think and feel, accepting your strengths and challenges without judgment and adopting new coping strategies. Objectives of this module. The information in this module will help you to learn more about what cognition thinking skills is and how it might change after encephalitis. Two, consider some examples of how encephalitis can impact the brain and cognition. Three, learn to notice your cognition and when this might be more challenging. Four, learn some strategies to support different areas of your cognition. Five, Learn more about the link between cognition, emotions, and other factors, and how they can impact each other. Objective one, learn more about what cognition processes, thinking skills, are, and how they might change after encephalitis. Cognition is an umbrella term that refers to a number of different thinking skills that we rely on to get along with other people, feel good about ourselves, and interact with our environment to achieve better quality in our day-to-day -day experiences. Understanding cognition. Before we think about how, how to be aware of our cognition, we need to first think about and understand what cognitive difficulties are. Being able to understand them helps you to manage them. Two of the most common areas of difficulty after encephalitis are with memory and executive function, which we'll focus on more here. Memory. Some examples of what memory helps us to do include remembering to do something, remembering the details of a conversation, remembering the route to get to a particular shop, learning someone's name, remembering someone's name, recognizing someone's face, recalling a particular experience and remembering living it, and learning a new skill. Executive functions. Some examples of what executive functions help us to include solving problems, changing the way you do something to get a better result, organizing your environment, doing things efficiently, shifting your focus back and forth, managing multiple demands, pulling together details and seeing the bigger picture, and thinking before you say or do something. This is a list of things you may have noticed can be more challenging in your life after encephalitis. See if any of the following statements apply to you. If they don't apply, how would you describe your challenges? Sometimes my brain feels foggy and like it's made of cotton wool. I find myself at a loss about what to do. I forget things easily and I feel that I don't accomplish much in a day. I say or do things without thinking. I find that other people don't always agree with me and don't seem to understand where I'm coming from. I don't know where to start when I have to tackle something new. When things go wrong, I feel like it is the end of the world. Objective two, consider some examples of how encephalitis can impact the brain and cognition. Example one, cognition shapes the quality of our day-to-day -day experiences. Luca was a very organized person before encephalitis. Life after encephalitis was very different. Luca often found himself feeling that he hadn't achieved very much at the end of the day. His partner noticed that he found it difficult to decide what to do and would often start something without finishing it, having moved on to something else, which he also did not complete. His partner suggested he do one thing at a time, leading to him feeling annoyed and unable to see her perspective. How does cognition shape what we feel and do? Luca's brain had been damaged from encephalitis, resulting in changes to his cognitive skills. Luca finds it difficult to think of a plan of what he should do each day. He is not aware of how much his attention shifts from one thing to another, but then feels frustrated when he does not achieve what he has set out to achieve. When he experiences these thoughts, he finds himself heading down a rabbit hole, bombarded by thoughts about how good he used to be at getting things done and how different he is to the old me before encephalitis. 
Luca knows that his partner is trying to be helpful, but he reacts quickly with anger when she makes a, com a comment. His partner says she is walking on eggshells, trying to make sure that she does not upset him. Labelling Luca's cognitive challenges. Due to the brain injury caused by encephalitis, Luca is being affected by ch changes in multiple cognitive processes, including a range of executive functions such as the ability to generate ideas, the ability to sustain attention when facing distractions, the ability to manage difficult emotions, the ability to stop and think before acting, the ability to see the perspective of others. Example two, can you label the cognitive challenges Aisha faces? After encephalitis, Aisha decided to enroll on a course to learn about law. Aisha enrolled in a local college, was excited to start and knew where her college was and the time and date of her first class. Whilst getting ready, the college contacted her by telephone to ask her to bring along a document with proof of her address. This unexpected demand left Aisha feeling frustrate, flustered and unprepared, understanding the job of our cognition. The quality of Aisha's day-to-day -day experiences has been negatively affected by encephalitis. Changes in the efficiency of her executive functions have made it challenging for her to hold lots of different things in her mind at once. As a result, she is finding it difficult to be organised and if something unexpected happens, it can really throw her off course and cause confusion. For Aisha, these difficulties can make it seem that everything she tries to do doesn't go well. She looks the same as before, so her challenges are hidden from view. Aisha thinks that nobody understands how her life has changed and she feels like it will always be this way. Labelling Aisha's cognitive challenges. Due to the brain injury caused by encephalitis, Aisha is being affected by changes in several different cognition skills, including executive functions such as the ability to plan ahead, the ability to be organised, the ability to solve unexpected tricky problems, the ability to manage difficult emotions. Objective three, learn to notice your own cognition and when this might be more challenging. How aware are you of your cognition? Have you noticed that your attention wanders easily and you get easily distracted? Have you noticed that your thinking can be quite black and white and it is more difficult to see the perspective of others? Have you noticed you are good at remembering some things, but really bad at remembering other things? Have you noticed that despite your best intentions, you often start something and fail to finish it? Thinking about your thinking. Learning to observe yourself with curiosity and without judgment is not an easy task. We can often fall into the trap of being self-critical, frustrated and annoyed when things don't go according to plan. The first stage of beginning to manage cognition after encephalitis requires you to become an expert in your own mental processes. This means learning to be fully aware and to observe yourself, how you are thinking and what you are feeling. Training your mind to notice your cognition. You may need to train your mind to see in yourself what other people can see. Be patient and curious with yourself and remember to accept whatever you happen to notice without judgment or criticism. Knowledge about your unique strengths and challenges in cognition after encephalitis provides the foundation to building a better life. Objective four, learn some strategies to support different areas of your cognition. Making cognition work for you. Some cognitive changes after encephalitis can be permanent, but some can be more malleable. The good news is, that while it may seem like things are never going to get better after encephalitis, this may not always be the case. There are lots of things you can do that will help your cognitive skills to work more efficiently and minimize the impact of cognitive challenges that you are facing. Some of the things in the following slides can be easily learned slash actioned by an individual, but others may need professional help. To also notice that how encephalitis affects an individual is very personal. No two people have the same outcomes. How to manage cognition changes. 
Strategies are very important in managing cognitive changes. Strategies are patterns of behaviour that are used to achieve a particular goal. For example, you might have a strategy of doing exercise in the morning when you first get up. Over time, the strategy you use can become automatic, an established pattern of behaviour that you are choosing to stick with because it helps. The sorts of strategies that help cognition particularly focus on the use of technology and learning to do things in a particular way to minimise cognitive challenges. Top tips for learning. It can be helpful to distinguish between learning something new, for example, someone's name and remembering something, for example, what you need to buy at the shops. When you are learning something new, try to remove all distractions so that you can focus, for example, turning off the television, write it down. Although it is easier said than done, try to avoid learning by making mistakes. We learn more efficiently if we can avoid making errors. This means avoid asking a person to make a guess if they don't know an answer. Instead, an individual needs to be exposed to the correct answer a number of times before being asked to remember it, thus greatly reducing the possibility of an error being generated. Setting reminders to do something will help you to remember about it. Break down the task of remembering into the following steps. What do I need to remember? What do I need to remember it? What is my backup plan if I don't remember? You can use post-it notes or reminders on your phone. Smart speaker systems, for example, Alexa or Amazon Echo also have reminder systems. Some people like using visual reminders, like putting a sign on the door to remember your keys or taking photos of important memories each day. There are apps that can help you organize photos and memories. Check out Day One app if you want a system to organize your photos and record your thoughts. Top tips for relying less on others. You might find that life after encephalitis has meant that you rely upon other people more than before. People who love and support you have taken on a role to remind you about things because they are worried that you may forget. If this is the case, it might help to discuss how you could take steps to feeling more independent. For example, I want to test out a strategy to remember the shopping today. Can you come with me, but don't tell me what we need to buy? because I will take a list with me. Top tips for executive functions. Number one, stay focused. How to keep your mind from wandering. Number two, getting started. You struggle to get things done despite your best intentions. Number three, shifting and time management. Moving your attention from one thing to another and keeping track of time. Number four, planning and organization. Planning your day and organising yourself and your environment to avoid stress. Five, flexible thinking. Moving beyond seeing things in only black and white. Six, solving problems. Working out how to start to tackle a problem. Top tips to get started and stay focused. Set a reminder on your phone or smart speaker to remind you when you want to start a task. Talk through the steps you are going to take. Divide the task into smaller parts to work through one at a time. Remove any distractions. Switch off notifications on your phone and create a quiet environment. Set a timer to allow yourself a break and avoid fatigue. Work in blocks of 20 minutes and then break and get some fresh air. Stay well hydrated. Drink water regularly. Remind yourself to manage your fatigue. Practice some breath work to reboost your energy levels if you are flagging. Top tips for time management. Set yourself a daily or weekly schedule. Recognise any challenges you face when you're shifting your attention from one thing to another. For example, filling out a form to another thing. For example, answering a call on your phone. Ask yourself, what am I working on? Where do I need to focus my attention? Be curious about the challenges you are facing. Do not judge or be critical. Keep a timer or clock within sight, or ask a smart speaker to prompt you. Give yourself plenty of countdown warnings, reminders or alarms if you need to keep time. Top tips for planning and organisation. Follow a plan and structure your day. Don't be resistant to planning ahead. 
Plan out your day beforehand and work out strategies to help you to keep on track. For example, set reminders on your phone slash smart speaker. Keep your environment organised. Label drawers and cupboards if you are not sure where things are stored. Keep things in the same place. A bag where you keep your keys and wallet can help you to avoid searching around for the things you need when you leave your home. Top tips for flexible thinking and solving problems. Be curious about the possibility that you may see things in a black and white manner. Your focus may be drawn to particular details and you may not readily take stock of the bigger picture when a problem occurs. For example, you have an argument with a friend and you're focused on the detail of what they said and you are unaware that your friendship is in jeopardy. Take steps to identify. What is the problem that I am facing? For example, I might lose my friend. Take steps to consider. What steps can I take to resolve the problem? How do I save the relationship? Objective five, learn more about the link between cognition, emotions, and other factors and how they can impact each other. Top tips for boosting your cognition. Get the best quality sleep possible. Exercise regularly and keep moving. Eat well, avoiding sugar and alcohol. Make connections with people who interest you. Manage stress in your life. Try box breathing. What you need to know about sleep. Sleep plays an essential role in brain health. While we sleep, the brain replenishes by getting rid of waste material. You may find life after encephalitis has affected your sleep. Regular routine, avoiding drinks with caffeine, relaxation before going to bed can help getting a good sleep. However, if you are struggling with the quality of your sleep, speak to your doctor to learn more about what can help. Top tips for resetting your response to stress. Do you recognise when you're feeling stressed? Perhaps your sleep is affected or you notice you are isolating yourself and avoiding talking to people. You may feel like you have a lot to do and little time to do it. High levels of stress can have a negative impact on your health. Sleep problems, headaches, fatigue and memory problems are linked to stress. Top tips to reset your stress levels. Check your stress levels. How much stress am I feeling now? Set reasonable goals and expectations for your day. Make a list. Be kind to yourself. Don't be self-critical. Allow yourself time to do something you find enjoyable. Think about the people and experiences you are thankful for. Have a backup plan. Focus on one thing at a time and work on the tough stuff when your energy is best and you feel rested. Breathing to manage stress. Nikki Rolo describes a simple form of breath work that will calm your nerves, nervous system and reduce stress. The breath work technique is called square breathing, also called box breathing. Let's try it. One. Focus on something square or rectangular in shape that you can see like a picture on the wall or a television. Two, begin by slowly exhaling all your breath out to a count of four as you follow the image of the square starting in one corner and moving to the next. Three, when you gaze, reaches the next corner, hold your breath to a count of four as you are following the image to the next corner. Then. When you reach the next corner, inhale to a count of four. Making connections. We are born with a basic need to belong to a group and form meaningful relationships. Yet for many people, life after encephalitis can result in more and more isolation from others. Research suggests that making social connections can be an important predictor of well-being across people's lives. Volunteering, joining a group, or talking to your neighbour can help you make connections that in time may grow. The Encephalitis Society has various opportunities for people to make connection. Encephalitis Forum, Connection Scheme, Support Volunteers, Virtual and In-Person Gatherings. There is more information on the website. Summary of Key Learning Objectives. In this module, you've learned about what cognition, thinking skills, is and how cognition might change after encephalitis. You've learned to notice your cognition and when this might be more challenging. 
you have learned some tips to support different areas of your cognition. You have learned about the link between cognition, emotions and other factors and how they can impact each other. Resources for more information and support. It can be difficult to live with cognitive changes. You can implement some of the strategies discussed here yourself, but don't hesitate to ask for support if you need it. If you would like professional help, talk to your family doctor slash GP as a first step. They can refer you to a neuropsychologist or other psychological therapies services available in your area that may help. If you want to know more about where to find support, please contact the Encephalitis Society by emailing support at encephalitis.info or calling 01653 You can find information about other difficulties following encephalitis on the Encephalitis Society website.